Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another very interesting video. What we can see in the ear canal here is very pale, almost whitish debris. And you know, you'll see more of that debris as we, as we kind of suction away down here. And you may be thinking, oh, is this an infection? Is this, you know, a dead skin mixed with pus and exudate and discharge and, and whatever else? Um, what this is, is a huge amount of freshly shed, freshly desquamated dead skin. And it's happened very, at such a, an advanced, quick rate that really the, the debris has not had much time at all to be exposed to the air and oxidize and change color. So when, when the dead skin sheds, um, to begin with, it's pale, almost whitish, like what you see here. Um, and then when the dead skin kind of mixes with uh, uh, sebum and sweat, your cerimonious glands in your ear canal, then it will turn into earwax and be that kind of usual brown yellowish color. So we have, you know, almost 99% dead skin here. And I know that it's fresh and rapidly shed because not just by the appearance, but also I saw this patient three weeks ago with the exact same problem and three weeks before that as well. So this is the third time that I'm seeing this patient um, in just, you know, within the space of two and a bit months. So with exactly the same presentation and each time I've cleaned down to the drum and I've cleared out away all this debris and yet it keeps on coming back again and again and again. So I've, I've already referred him to uh, an ENT consultant, but that takes time. And uh, obviously, you know, when his ear kind of gets clogged like this, he can't hear. So I've come, he's come back again and I can, uh, I can clean it out for him. But this is a highly unusual case. What what makes it weird is that it's happening in such a short space of time. So, you know, something is causing the skin in his ear canal to rapidly divide at such a huge rate that, you know, the ear simply cannot keep up. The ear cannot self-clean. You know, it cannot, you know, can, you know, convey out all of this debris. So it's just getting clogged. And what makes it, you know, even more unusual is that there's no obvious, there are no obvious hallmarks of inflammation here. So when we see something like this, pale white debris in the ear canal, we usually think a few things. We, the first thing I would, I would think is, oh, this patient has used hydrogen peroxide drops, which has kind of bleached all the debris, a pale color. Fair enough, that's not happened. The second thing I would be thinking is, oh, is there a bacterial infection? Has there been a bacterial infection recently or is there still one there? Because when you have an infection, um, you know, the white blood cells that rush to the area, the macrophages, will fight the infection, but also release another substance called growth, uh, growth factor, which are like chemical signals that, te that tell the skin cells, the basal layer of your, your epidermis, to start dividing rapidly. So that's called rapid cell turnover. That would explain it. However, um, there are no obvious hallmarks of inflammation, you know, which are redness or rubor, uh, dolor, which, or dolor, which is pain, um, tumor, which is swelling, um, loss of function. Um, there's nothing, you know, if you were to look, if you were to clean this out and then look at the ear, it would look kind of normal. Um, and the patient doesn't report any weird symptoms other than when the ear reaches critical mass and then bang, it blocks. So it, it's, it's quite a, a weird case. Um, the only other thing, the only other explanation I could go with is, you know, maybe is this an autoimmune thing? Is this psoriasis? But then he doesn't have this kind of rapid skin shedding anywhere else on his body. So that then leaves, you know, eczema, which is like dermatitis. Uh, maybe is there like an underlying fungal infection hiding in the skin? I have no idea. So if there are any doctors, nurses, scientists, pathologists out there, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section below and uh, let me know your thoughts. But um, in any case, what we're trying to do here is basically just evacuate as much dead skin as possible and reveal the eardrum. Now, this particular time he's come in, the, the, the first two times he came in, it was actually a fairly quick and easy procedure, just kind of suction down to the drum, not a problem. But this particular time was quite difficult and I had spent a lot of time with this section here. So what we can see, we, we, do, we can actually see some of the eardrum and it's that slightly gray skin back there. It's not 
totally obvious, but I'll, um, I'll mark it with an arrow. So we can see kind of the left hand side of the eardrum, like 60%, but the rest of it is hidden behind this very well entrenched uh, sort of nugget of, of dead skin. And uh, it is basically pretty much on the drum. It's actually hidden in this little trench, this little recess, the anterior recess. And, um, you know, normally, again, that's not too difficult to get out. You know, if you can, you can drown the ear with oil and it'll kind of just slide out. But um, patient was finding this perhaps a little uncomfortable, um, again, because I'm so close to the drum. And, you know, anytime I want to sort of put a little bit of pressure on that plug of dead skin, that's kind of pressing on his eardrum a little bit and can, in ear canal, which, you know, if done lightly, doesn't hurt, but it's uncomfortable. Um, and again, the patient's not, uh, not under any sort of anesthesia, he's just sitting in the chair. So again, just trying to, I've applied some olive oil here and I'm just trying to kind of suck up of, as much of the skin as I can whilst the patient can tolerate it. So just going in here with a fine end, which is bent. You might see that bend throughout various sections of the video. And oddly enough, you can't buy them bent. You have to actually bend it in the packet and then, and then attach it onto the suction probe. So that's just a sort of trick of the trade, really. Moving in again. And every time I kind of latch onto a piece and then move out. So if you, if you see various cuts in the video, that's because a little piece of dead skin is kind of attached onto the end of the suction probe and is then blocked it. So I'm having to go out and wipe it with a wipe and then, you know, draw some, some water through the suction probe here. So, and this, this whole piece is kind of as one, but I'm going to have to break it apart. See here, I'm just kind of peeling it away. And th this is really what takes uh, a long time when you're doing suction like this. It's, it's when the debris doesn't come out in one chunk. It's just kind of, you know, breaking apart into little segments like that. And uh, you're kind of forever going in and out, in and out, in and out because, um, because the fine end suction probe is so small, it gets blocked very easily. And you can't really go that deep with the regular suction probe, the, the standard Zollner suction probe, um, because A, it's, it's to some degree quite dangerous because it's so large and it's got such a, lot of, uh, such a large amount of power that if you were to touch the eardrum with it, um, you'd, un you'd likely cause a lot of bleeding and discomfort, but also it's incredibly loud, you know, deafeningly loud. So we have no choice but to use the fine end gauge here. And also when I'm doing delicate work like this, where I'm taking dead skin off the ear canal, um, again, the, fi the, the regular Zollner suction probe is okay at doing that, but again, you have way more precision with the fine end. Um, and again, we're at, at this point, we're working pretty much exclusively now in the bony third of the ear canal. So outer third is cartilage lovely squishy bouncy cartilage and fat and whatever else to you know it's not too um too difficult to suction in that area and you can kind of be a little bit ham-fisted with it and you can you can kind of you know take liberties and kind of suction around and, and and touch the skin it's not a problem um but when you're in the bony portion of the ear canal it, it if you were to do that it would cause quite a lot of damage and be extremely painful um, because again, it's just very thin skin on bone, you know, tenth of a millimeter, something like that on, you know, on bone. Um, or rather, there'll be skin and then um, periosteum and, and then bone. So periosteum is like the, the kind of cling film kind of connective tissue which lines bone. Um, so it's a very, very sensitive part of the ear. So again, just hoovering, hoovering, hoovering. And we can see a much clearer picture of the eardrum now. So it looks, it doesn't look necessarily pretty, the eardrum, because it, again, it's got little, you know, bits and pieces of dead skin everywhere. Um, but the patient's symptoms are now pretty much gone. He can hear, which is great. And again, I'm, I'm trying to clean the drum as much as possible, but patient's starting to get a little bit jittery. Again, as you would expect, because I'm cleaning debris basically off the eardrum. You could say, well, this is an, an, you know, quite a nice case where irrigation could come in, where you could flush the ear clear of, of water. You could do maybe 10, 20 seconds of irrigation where you pulse warm water into the ear and that would kind of, you know, swill and kind of, you know, mop up all the little bits of debris. But I daren't get this ear wet. 
because just because of the the, the you know the condition um, really you know we don't want to so there's the before image um, just a complete mess and there's the after image so quite a big difference there um, but yeah I really didn't want, didn't want to get the ear wet because bacteria love to to proliferate and feed on you know soggy dead skin so I didn't want to make it wetter than it already is but a uh, very interesting case there kind of a mystery as to what's going on um, if I hear back from the ENT doctor I will let you know exactly what's going on but uh, you know maybe they'll take a, a swab you know who knows um, but I will uh, I'll get back to you with that so thank you very much for watching if you have any questions or if you have any info about what you think is going on here please let me know in the comment section below uh, and as always I will see you on the next video